Hmm. It seems like it's not doing anything. Maybe it's broken? Or maybe we just need to solve the puzzles in order. We're not done with the other one yet. Little puzzles. Recognize this? Yeah. It's from the story where the goblins tricked the Mad Hunter. It looks like it, but it's different, right? Can you check the book? We can indeed check the book. Um, oh, we're still in the same one, so... No, which, which one's the Mad Hunter? Well, here it is. Ah, here it is. Why do you think she changed the picture? I don't know. Maybe it's a message. Like, the differences between the two mean something. Hmm. Something about Marianne, right? Since she's the princess? Yeah. Why don't we try to find them all and then see if it makes any sense? Okay, so we need to compare and contrast. So we've got the Mad Hunter, trees, the goblins. I don't know what that is. The goblins trick the Mad Hunter. Once upon a time in a castle just beyond the ancient and deep forest, the Mad Hunter was punished by the Gold Lady for failing to return with the wise princess. For your failure, said the Gold Lady, I will take your left hand. You will return it to the ancient and deep forest and hunt the wise princess. And if you can bring her back, I will return your hand to you. Fail again, and I will take your right hand. The Mad Hunter could hunt with just his right hand, but if he lost both his hands, he would never be able to hunt again, and would no longer be a Mad Hunter, but only a Mad Man. So, the Mad Hunter returned to the ancient and deep forest, searching with his piercing eye for the wise princess. The crafty goblins were out searching for mischief when they saw the Mad Hunter on the prowl. We cannot let him find the princess, said the goblins, and so they devised a plan. It was wash day, and the princess had hung her beautiful gown out to dry. They stole it from the line and stuffed it full of straw, and then returned to where the mad hunter was scouring the paths of the forest. As the mad hunter turned down a path that would have led him to the big wooden house, the goblins danced the straw princess in and out of view in the opposite direction. The ruse worked. The hunter fixed his piercing eye on them and followed. Through the day and into the night, they led him away from the true princess. As night fell, the crafty goblins realised the error of their plan. The mad hunter was now hunting them. If he caught them, he would not be kind. So they put their heads together to come up with a plan. It did not take them long to realise where they should go. They led the mad hunter to the edge of the deep and icy lake, and when he came into view, they weighed the fake princess down with stones and dropped her into the frigid water careful not to plunge into the depths themselves, lest the moon hag take her revenge on them. The mad hunter removed his clothing and dove in after the fake princess. He followed the shape of the sinking princess deep into the chilly water down below where the ice covered the lake's surface. Finally, he caught her, but when he spun her towards him, he realised she had no head and that her body was stuffed with straw. And then he felt a slippery fin brush his shoulder as the moon hag loomed overhead. The next morning, the princess went to retrieve her gown from the clothing line and found that it was gone. She immediately suspected the goblins of mischief and called, Goblins, did you take my gown? The goblins emerged from their cave and nodded sadly. Now what will I wear? asked the princess, sad and angry that she'd lost her dress. Let us explain, said the goblins. So they told the princess the story of the mad hunter, and then they produced his clothing, which was a bit large for the princess, but much warmer than a beautiful gown. She immediately forgave them. Thank you, my friends, she said, for rescuing me, and for this clothing, which will keep me much warmer in the winter than my beautiful gown. The mad hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the moon hag, but she did not kill him, because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day he would emerge to once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. And this is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the mad hunter. Okay, so that's not the princess, that's a, a dress stuffed with hay.
Oh, okay, that's the next story. Uh, okay, then we've got arms, trees. Okay, spot the differences. Well, we're missing. It moves. That's oh, some of these parts are buttons. It moves. The Mad Hunter still has two hands here. So this was either before the Gold Lady cut off his other one, or after he earned it back? Which either makes it before most of the stories, or after. Yeah, at some point when she was running away from whatever the hell the Mad Hunter meant to Marianne. Why do you think she added that castle in the background? See the color of the flag? It could be her mother's castle. It looks like the princess is running away from it. So, Marianne ran away from home, and she grew up kind of rich? Interesting. Um, let's see. Oh, we have a, a moon. Oh, that's a different kind of tree. Huh. No goblins. Yeah. In the original, the goblins managed to save the princess from the Mad Hunter. So, we saved Marianne from something. Not in this version. Okay. Yeah, we only have the one hand. And that's it, isn't it? Let's look at the... No, the lotuses are in the, the picture. That's fine. Figured anything out yet? And we've got the stars on either side. I think those were all the differences. Does his smile look different to you? No. I think that's it. So... Very old beavers repair list. Why are these Crafty. pictures from the Book of Goblins here? I, I don't know. Hey, I want to take a crack at this one before we try to figure out any others. Okay, okay. so something... Spot the differences. Well, we selected the princess because she wasn't there. Well, here it is. Why do you think she changed the picture? I don't know. Maybe it's a message. Like, the differences between the two mean something. Hmm. Something about Marianne, right? Yeah. Since she's the princess? Yeah. Why don't we try to find them all and then see if it makes any sense? The text and the yeah. moon are switched. It's not the same title, so I guess that counts as a difference. That's Ooh, it. Ooh, that oh. was it. What's in there? Tyler, see that little light? I think no. we need to solve this one next. Pictures, letters, have you ever seen any of these? All the pictures of Marianne I've ever seen were the ones hanging on the walls. Wow, okay, this An is artsy interesting. Yep, that sounds like Marianne's exact kind of catnip. <laughs> Did you know she studied engineering? No, but it looks like she changed her major to visual arts. I don't upset. think she actually got it changed. The paper's not signed, and it's all wrinkled. Like someone tried to throw it away. University of California, Berkeley. An oh, no. artsy not environmentalist. That yep, that sounds like Marianne's exact kind of catnip. Marianne, I can't do this anymore. You deserve better than cliche bullshit. Like, it's not you, it's me. But the truth is... It's all just been too much to deal with, and I've realized I'm just not ready. Maybe if we could have dealt with all of this on our own, without your mum constantly putting pressure on us, things could have been different. But the damage is done, and it's probably too late for that now. I'm so sorry. You're an amazing person, and you made me a better man. I hate myself for doing this, but it, I feel like we're both better off apart. There I go with the cliches again. Please don't ever stop being who you are. Here, but I'm gone. Brent. Here, but I'm gone. Oh, don't like that. Could this guy have been any more cryptic? 
Wow, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of her that young. I think that's her mom in the background. <sighs> a ballet princess? I can't believe she was a ballet dancer. Mary Ann. And a good one, too. God, that's so not her. That might have been the mum then. Jacksonville Ballet Art com Competition, first prize. Second place, yeah. Oh, poor thing. Why would she keep an old drawing of a pet in here? My birdie, Polly, I'll miss you forever. No. The gold lady. That was definitely her mom. So, did Marianne grow up kind of rich? Maybe. Would have been nice to have some of that. Tyler, see that little light? I think we need to solve this one next. Yep. There's the gold lady again. She's all over the board. There was a figure of her in that stash by the Mad Hunter painting, right? Oh, yeah. So maybe all of this is related to what we found in there. Wow. She's got eyes all over her. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, her cruel parents kept her locked away in their musty palace. Oh, let's see. Any symbols? No. I thought maybe the eye. The bear and the princess. The bear fixes the house. A uh, beaver. Princess party. Goblins in the ice cave. Princess and two thieves. New friends. Bear's big paws. Pelican helps. Goblins earn the voice. Big frog is punished. Goblins save the old beaver. Irritate the ice king. Forgives the goblins. Goblins meet the ice troll. Trick the muskrat. The moose teaches the goblins. The mad hunter gets his hand back. I don't think the journal's going to be much use here. Hey, I can move the piece next to the gold lady. All these pictures. They look like images from Marianne's life before Delos, don't they? Well, some of them do anyway. Maybe that's it then. We need to figure out which ones are real. Uh... Is the gold lady setting the animals free? Mm -hmm. Judging from the broomstick, I'd say she's getting rid of them, not setting them free. <laughs> the princess dancing, playing violin, spinning wool. I guess this is stuff she did for fun. Notice how unhappy she looks in all these pictures. I don't think she was having any fun. Yeah, I'm picking dancing because she was. The wise was. princess looks like she's trying to run away. And she's being watched by the gold lady. With the eyes everywhere. But she did, what was it, engineering? So it must be that one. Uh, nope. Huh. What's the gold lady doing? Whispering something into someone's ear behind the princess's back? It seems like the gold lady's kind of stabbing the princess in the back in all these, right? So it must be the artist uh, person, right? So I'm guessing the birdie. Is that it? It's opening. Check. Got it. What's in there this time? Ooh. That's a pretty picture. Okay. Long letter at the front. Her father. We haven't heard anything about her father yet. Marianne, I hope this letter finds you, but since you didn't leave any contact information, I will have to send it to your aunt and hope for the best. I'm writing to inform you that your mother has passed away last week. We just had a funeral reception. The house has been filled with people all day. Friends, family, colleagues and church members. It's now 11pm and I'm sitting alone at the kitchen table, surrounded by dozens of trays of food, flowers and sympathy cards. 
Your cousin A.D. brought you brought in a beautiful photo album full of our holiday pictures in La Connor. You're there in all of them, but you weren't here today. We haven't heard from you in four years and can only hope you made it to Alaska or wherever you are and that you are, and your child are both safe. They even know she had twins. Your mother had been sick and depressed for years and you can imagine why. The pain of being shunned by her own daughter knowing she would never get to see her grandchild grow up. It spread through her body like cancer and consumed her completely. All this suffering simply because you ran away like a temperamental little girl instead of accepting her help when you got pregnant, pregnant out of wedlock after dropping out of college and without a penny to your name. She only stepped up to help because she knew you weren't ready to raise a child properly, Marianne. A mother's duty doesn't end when her children leave home. Now that you're a mother yourself, I hope you'll begin to understand that good parenting isn't about coddling children. It's about providing for them and shaping them into the people they're supposed to become. Oh, this is giving me the heebie-jeebies. I won't trouble you again. You've made your intentions clear. I just thought you should know. Oh, nasty dad. <laughs> the end. Uh, nope, don't know, do not like. What the hell? Marianne was pregnant in 1992, before she even got here. Before us? Do we have a long lost sibling out there somewhere? It's possible, oh. but she could have given it up or miscarried. Who knows? Yeah, you're right. I did not Do connect you think those we dots. Could track down her father? You mean the grandfather she never told us about? I don't think I want to. You're not at all excited about having more family. You saw the letter. I don't think we want any part of that. Fine. Let's keep digging. He does not sound like a nice person. Salmonberry Park. Oh. Salmonberry Park. Huh. Is that some kind of commune? Looks like it. So weird to imagine her living in a community like that, with, you know, other people. The weirdest part is how they all seem to love her. Where was prom queen Marianne when the whole town was turning on us? Mm. From the good people of Salmonberry Park, Kodiak Island. Don't be a stranger. Keep on looking for those answers to the questions in your head to which you're blind. Smiley face, Shelly. Okay, that face. Feels sort of passive aggressive. We miss you already, Sol and Bronwyn. Sorry we're losing you to the modern civilization. We'll miss your positive attitude and your adventurous spirit. Also, your wild edibles picking skill. <laughs> Pretty Marcus. Bon voyage, Marianne. Rick. Marianne, you had the warmest, most beautiful aura, and I'll know you'll keep on shining wherever you land. Peace and blessings, Jerita. Thanks for being our little ray of sunshine. Godspeed, Cabo and Wati. I like your pictures, love, Kamala. Mm. Wow. She worked for a watchmaker in Juno before she moved to Delos. No wonder she was so handy. Huh. Here's my Delos cr Crossing pal's number. I uh, let him know you were interested in the house he's selling, Tammy. Mm. Is that Carol? Yeah, and Ooh. Sam. Look <laughs> at him. He's so young and happy. Aww. Yeah, it's a bit sad. Okay. This just next. lit up, so I think we're supposed to try this one next. One day, she took her tiara and ran What's away this? to the forest. Hmm. Some sort of map? Castle. Let's wish with the bear and the beaver. Clock. Okay, so clock making in Juno. That's the house in the forest. That must be the commune. So she went from That's the, the castle, castle to the What's commune. That plant thing on top? Oh, this is the princess's house. Oh, no. That's wrong. No, I didn't want to leave. I want to deselect that. Princess's house. Gone. 
Some sort of clock? She went to Juno first. And then the, the princess's princess. house. And this then... This looks like a dinner party with the old community. bear and the very old beaver. Yes. <laughs> What's in there? Another letter? Whoa. The princess's loss. Is this from the Book of <gasps> Goblins? Not that I know of. Well, sure looks like it could be. Ooh, 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 ooh. Are we going to find out? The princess's loss. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. She'd made it through the woods and to that house with nothing left but the clothes on her back and a single item from her old life. A splendid tiara. She lost almost everything in a desperate flight from the mad hunter. The trees tore her rucksack from her back and shredded her dress and left a pattern of red welts on her skin. But through it all, she clutched the tiara close to her chest, fearing any misstep could cause it to fall from her arms and break. The tiara had its own spot in the big wooden house, a pillow near the window where the sun would catch it on its surface to shine and wink. The princess would, could stare for hours at the tiara, marvelling in its be beauty and running her thumb down its curves. Every morning she would wake and she would tend to it, polishing its every surface to be sure it shone as brightly as it possibly could. Then she would pluck it up, place it upon her head and walk the woods, feeling somehow more complete. Because what, after all, was a princess without a crown? Every night she would place it upon its pillow, give it a quick kiss and go to bed. On her way she would pause and glance back to be sure it was still there. She hated to be separa separated from it but she knew it was safest on the pillow while she slept. Oh, okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. Yeah. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. Oh. And her that was the story she read us that night. God, it makes sense now. Yeah, she got pregnant. She ran away to start a new life. And then she made her way to Delos Crossing, where she was finally happy. But then the baby died. No. Oh. I can't even imagine how she must have felt. She left everything behind. Built a whole new life for him. And then... He was just gone. I guess having us helps her move mm. on. But... When it looked like we were gonna be taken away... She snapped. She just couldn't lose any more children. Yeah. It really wasn't anything we did. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this. I don't either, but all I wanted was to understand what happened to her. And now I do. Yeah. But we still haven't seen what's in that chest. That's a lot of trauma. Okay, I feel... Okay, so how do we open it? Well, we got the letters, but I want to look around a bit more and I feel like I might have missed a story here. No, so we did that. No, that was... No, okay, we... we... I did not miss anything. Let's have a look at the other pictures. Hey, I want to take a crack at this one before we try to figure out any others. Okay. Sorry, we're still going in order. <laughs> That's a cute. <laughs> no, we, we can't do anything with that yet. Um, so that was O L E. 
All right, should be easy enough. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> L. E. The princess lost her most precious treasure. That's why it all happened. I still can't wrap my head around it. Hmm, 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 that did not do it. O. L. E is correct. All right, should be easy enough. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just going to try the different combinations with it now. Did I miss color coding? Is it color coded? Okay, O is in yellow, L is in red, E is in orange. Why don't we just break this open? There's a crowbar right downstairs. What? No. If you don't want to try and figure out what all this means. I'm so done with her riddles. Did I guess it wrong again? The E is in orange. That crowbar is sounding uh. pretty nice right now. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> Leo, because it's a name. Oh my God, I'm so yes. slow. <laughs> Wow. Whoa. Did it just get darker in here? Yep. She did study engineering, so it all makes sense. Ollie. She, uh, <gasps> she noticed. Woo! Dear How Alison and Ollie. We write stories to understand and be understood. But what good is a story without a first act? I'm sorry I kept mine from you for so long. All my love, goblins. Ah. Why does she have a photo of that tree locked in here? Secrets. Or is that where the baby's buried? Oh. Is that? Leo Ronan. No. Why didn't she tell us about him? Why didn't she tell us any of this? I mean, it's fucking terrible. That's why. Allie, did we do the right thing opening this? We did. It's better we know what happened, even... Even if it's hard. And there's one more thing we need to see. Are you sure? Yes. Come on. Let's go to the dock. It's time to finish this. Oh, let me look at the other stuff, please. Crafty Goblin's loot. That's from the princess and the two thieves. I drew the original. And I distinctly remember drawing that cake, which is <laughs> arguably the best part of that illustration. <laughs> All right, Picasso. And you probably remember what the goblins stole in that story, huh? Uh. Nope. Um, let's see which one it was. Princess and the Two Thieves. Here they are. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. The house was built from the strong wood of the forest, and it kept the princess warm and safe. The princess was not native of the forest, but she never spoke about where she'd come from, for it made her cry. She did not have many friends, but that was how she liked it. The forest was big and deep, and many paths led to her house, but not many visitors passed by. The princess was happy to be left alone in the big house in the deep forest. She knew that the forest would provide for her, but that its generosity had to be respected, 
So she only took what she needed. And for a long time, life was just fine for the princess in the big wooden house. One winter day, when the snow blanketed the earth and ice bent the trees low, the wise princess realised that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first, only a few fruits and nuts and eggs vanishing during the night. Maybe it's the birds, she said, or the mice. And for a time, the princess was okay with losing some food, for the winter was long and little creatures needed to eat too. But then small items started disappearing as well. Spoons and plates, forks and knives, and blankets. It was as if every time she was in one part of the house, something disappeared in another room. That can't be birds or mice, said the princess. I think I have a thief. So she went outside to look for traces in the snow and noises in the wind, but there was nothing to be found, nor to be heard. That's strange, said the princess. Maybe the thief is hiding inside my house. For many days she hunted, looking behind the curtains and under the bed, in the attic and the chimney, behind the poles and under the carpets, but she found nothing. And as she searched, food kept on disappearing night after night. I will make a cake, frowned the princess, a big cake with every egg and fruit and nut I still have, so that I only have one thing to keep my eye on. She spent the whole day making the cake and using everything she had left. The cake she made was so big she could hardly carry it. If I manage to protect the cake, I'll be able to survive the long winter, she said. So she added a lock to the oven and she kept the big cake safe inside. But the next morning, the lock had been opened and the cake had disappeared. At first, the princess cried because that cake was the last of her food until the snow melted. But then she noticed two trails of tiny feet in spilled flour. She followed the tracks to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. This is how the princess realised that two tiny thieves were living under the wooden house right below her feet. <laughs> That's cute, because that really is a, a goblin story. <laughs> so she, they stole... Maybe fruits. they took some of the princess's fruit? They did. And eggs... I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. Did they steal sweets? I don't remember. Uh, eggs, maybe, blah, 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 okay, things, but then small items and blankets, okay. Uh, small items. What if they took some spoons? <laughs> That's it. Huh? I always wondered where that drawing went. She said it was her favorite, and then one day it just disappeared. <laughs> You're the best mum in the world, the prettiest princess. Oh. What's this? Gold lady stays locked up in her castle. Oh, this is where you put all the collectibles. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, the have his rock back. The Ice King goes in the forest. Obviously. There you go, stalwart moose. And fishing, because that's, you know, Eddie Brown. And we're missing two. Oh, no, we're missing two. Terrible. Oh. There's more. The moon hag's got to be imprisoned in her lake. The mad hunter. Always on the princess's trail. The wise princess goes in the big wooden house, of course. Crafty goblins go here. <laughs> That's the pious pelican spot. So we're missing three. That's the busy beaver. The old bear's gifts for the princess. I'm totally blanking on that story. What did he give her again? Why don't we open up the book and check? Look at the, the, I think that's the wolf at the top. That's great. <laughs> Hidden in the trees. That's a, no, that's a bear paw. The bear's big paws. The bear and the princess. Oh, that's the right picture. Once upon a time in the ancient and deep forest, the old bear stood on the bank of the river, swiping at salmon on their way to the spawning grounds. Just as he got his paw on a particularly fat one, he heard a woman shouting for help. 
he considered simply eating a salmon, but then she screamed again and he lumbered over to investigate. After a short walk, he found the princess clinging to the top of the tree while a wolf snarled and snapped at the base of it. Old Bear would normally not get in the middle of such a situation. After all, as a fellow predator, he understood the wolf's need to hunt. But when he saw the princess, he was struck by her beauty and he knew he had to help. With a great roar, the bear heaved onto his hind legs, rising to his full height. The wolf snapped and snarled in his direction, but the bear roared again and the wolf took off into the trees, tail between his legs. The old bear fell back down onto all fours and stared up at the princess. She regarded him fearfully. You can come down, he said. How do I know you didn't save me just so you could eat me yourself, asked the princess. I suppose this is a fair question, admitted the old bear, but I promise I won't eat you. The princess had no reason to trust the old bear except that he had kind eyes and she slowly made her way down the tree. When she reached the ground, the bear only watched her and so she supposed she was not going to be eaten today. Thank you, she told the old bear. Of course, he said. Can I walk with you back to your home? Of course, said the princess. And so the princess and the old bear walked together through the forest back to the big wooden house. After that day, the princess would occasionally find gifts from the bear. A fresh caught salmon, a handful of ripe berries and a newly bloomed bluebell. One spring, when a sudden thaw flooded the path out of the princess's home, the old bear was there and she rode his back across the river. The old bear began to think that the princess should be his mate. After all, she had no mate and she needed one, and he could keep her warm and provide her a much more suitable den and catch fish for her and protect her from wolves. She, in turn, would brush his fur and pick berries without smooshing them, half of them and scratch that one part, part on his back he couldn't reach and with how she took care of the goblins, she would be an excellent mother for his cubs. Oh dear. One day, the old bear came with a ring of spruce and asked the princess to be his bride. I'm sorry, said the princess. You're a very good friend, and I appreciate all you've done for me, but I cannot marry you. You're a bear, and I'm a princess. It would never work. The old bear was crushed. Can we still be friends? he asked. We will always be friends, said the princess, but I will never marry you. The old bear and the princess carried on their friendship and after one year he tried again to ask her to be his bride, but once again she refused him. This happened one year later and one year after that and then finally the princess said, Old bear, you are my dear friend and I appreciate all you've done for me, but I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you and that is how it will always be. I have my hands full with the two goblins who live under my house, and they are all I need. That wounded the old bear deeply, but it was finally enough to stop his proposals. They remained friends, and he continued to give her gifts of fresh salmon and ripe berries and newly bloomed bluebells. But the old bear never again asked the princess to be his bride, much as he might have wanted to. And that is how the princess befriended the old bear and how she refused him. People should really stop when someone said no for the first time. Honestly. This isn't a sweet story. <laughs> it ended well, but let's leave it at that. Um, we need a fish. Oh, that must be a berry to the left. So. Huh. Fresh caught salmon? Fresh caught salmon. A handful of ripe berries? Berries and a bluebell. A newly bloomed bluebell? Check. Nice. Man, he had it bad. Just couldn't let go. Sorry for the note under the door like a prison inmate. You okay? I stopped by and rang a couple of times this week, but you didn't answer. I could see the light in the hayloft, so I figured you were in, but didn't want to talk. I hope I didn't ruin everything. I know I probably came on kind of strong, but the thing is, I don't know how to talk to a woman like you. You're strong and kind, and you know so much, it's hard for me to know how to keep up. I guess it all went to my head. But I want you to know, I got the message, and I'm going to get out of your hair now, and there doesn't need to be any bad feelings. We can pass in the street and, hello or, and say hello or not. It's okay. P.S. I noticed your car was leaking, so I put some sealant in there. You might need to take it to the shop, though. Let me know if you want me to come with you, because sometimes these guys try to rip you off. If not, no big deal, Sam. <laughs> Oh, okay. And 
Okay, we got that one. Two more. The very old beaver's repair list. That's the story where the princess's house gets damaged by a storm and the animals help her fix it. Yeah. What did they do to fix it again? Here we go. Um, yeah, the beaver fixes the house. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. One night, a particularly violent storm shook the house. It shook the shingles on the roof and the planks in the walls. It even shook the beams on which the house stood, blowing the whole thing near to the ground. The princess hid in a closet, fearing the house would come down on her as she slept. In the morning, the house was still standing, but it was badly damaged. The storm had blown the shingles off the roof and planks off the walls and even bent a post upon which the house stood. The first two things she could fix, but the last concerned her. What will I do, despaired the wise princess, for though she knew many things, she did not know how to fix the big wooden house. Just then, the old bear came by to see if the princess had any trouble in the storm. When he found her nailing planks back into place, he said, Stop, princess, let me do that for you. I'm happy to do it, said the princess, but if you want to help with the roof, you may. When the pair were done with the roof and the walls, they examined the bent support, last, uh, support post. I could throw my body against it, said the old bear. I'm very large. He stretched up onto his hind legs, being sure the princess could appreciate how very large he was, <laughs> then charged straight at the post. He threw his body against it with an impressive thud. The impact moved the post, but too far, and it ended up bent in the other direction. <laughs> the wise princess decided more precision was needed. She thought then of the very old beaver, who kept an excellently crafted dam. Perhaps she can help. She went looking for the very old beaver and found the industrious animal hard at work slapping down mud on a part of their dam that had been blown apart in the storm. Most of the structure was unharmed because the beaver was very good at building things. The princess knew she had, to, she had come to the right place. Beaver, she said, my house was damaged in the storm. Would you help me fix it? I believe I could do that, yes, said the very old beaver, and she paused at fixing her own den to follow the princess. The very old beaver examined the big wooden house and nodded. It will be an easy fix, she said, and she set about writing the post with loud slaps of her tail. When she was done, the wise princess stroked the beaver's head. Thank you, beaver, she said. The wind, the wind blew the shingles off the roof and the planks off the walls and even bent this post. Now, thanks to you, I still have a home. Think Navik nothing of it, said the very old beaver, who returned to work on her own den once again. That winter, the very old beaver grew ill, very ill. She was not able to fix her den, nor to gather food. And when the princess found out, she set about delivering meals to the beaver. She brought stews of corn and beans and baskets full of bark and twigs from the beaver's favourite aspen. One day, the wise princess noticed that the beaver's den had begun to, begun to fall apart. She set about fixing it and thought, she, though she was not as talented as the very old beaver, the fix kept the creature warm and dry. Thank you, said the very old beaver. Of course, said the princess. You helped me when the storm blew my house near to the ground. Thanks to you, I still have a home, and I'm happy to do the same. The princess continued to nurse the old beaver until the day she came to the dam and the forest was still. No birds sang, no branches rustled, no small things skittered within the underbrush. Oh, said the princess, staring sadly at the dam, for she knew the old beaver had passed on. Goodbye, my friend. And that is how the very old beaver saved the big wooden house and how the wise princess repa repaid her kindness. Maybe the very old beaver was um, Eddie's mum, I think. Uh, okay, so let's fix the shingles. Uh, she fixed the roof shingles. And the planks. She fixed the planks that were blown off the walls. And the posts. She slapped the posts with... All right. Yeah. Let her... That must have been rough on Eddie. Yeah, he uh, yeah. He doesn't really like to talk about her. No, dear Marianne, you cover your ears every time I try to have this conversation with you, so I thought I'd have a better chance doing this in a letter. I know you don't like saying goodbye, so I'll keep my melancholic rambling short and sweet. I want to thank you with all my heart for taking care of me for these past few months. 
I can't even imagine how exhausted it must have been for you to look after a sick old lady when you also have two small children at home. I know you want to keep fight me to I know you want me to keep fighting this disease and hoping for recovery, but it's always been a great strength of mine to know when it's time to let go, and that time has come. I'd like to ask you for one last favour. Please take care of Eddie after I'm gone. My poor boy puts on a bra brave front ever since his fa father died, but I know he's in pain. I would be so much more at peace knowing he still has family. Maybe he could teach the kids how to fish? He loves spending time with them. Thank you for the warmth and the peace you brought to my life. Give the kids a kiss for me, will you, Carol? Yeah, it's Eddie's mum, oh dear. And then the kids did go fishing with him and all that, so... That was, that was alright. The crafty goblin's good deeds. Of course, Ooh. the goblins had to help out the creatures of the forest to pay off their debt to the pelican. Uh, well, what did they do? You know, <gasps> I don't really remember. This is cute, but was it the community service after they got caught stealing? <laughs> um, the good deeds. Uh, where was that? No, that's not that one. Makes friends. Da -da -da -da. The frog is punished. Oh, here, this is. Or no, this what the pelican forgives the goblins. Wasn't there one specifically with the good deeds? Or maybe not. Come on. Oh, that got corrected. Pelican forgives the goblins. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins in a cave below a big wooden house. They lived with a wise princess who shared as much food with them as she was able, but it was never quite enough. This left the goblins hungry, very hungry, always hungry. One day, as they were out foraging for food, the pious pelican landed on a rock and dumped a smorgasbord from, the, from her beak which the goblins knew was magic and never emptied. There were king crabs in red, blue, gold and scarlet, veiny blue shrimp, pink shelled scallops, oblong brown clams, purple spiny urchins, and even one prickly red sea cucumber. The food just kept coming. They watched as the pelican ate one clam and then took a nap. Do you think she would mind if we took just a little? asked one goblin to the other. Her beak never empties. She won't possibly miss a couple of crabs, said the second, licking her lips. They were agreed, so they crept over, filched some crabs and ran. The goblins scarfed the crabs, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. She won't miss a handful of shrimp, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the shrimp, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. Maybe also a few scallops, said one go goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the scallops, but when they were finished, they found that they were still hungry. So, they went back for clams, and then urchins, and finally even the sea cucumber. Finally, they were not hungry, but there was also nothing left. Just then, the pelican woke up. What happened to my food? she asked. Unable to lie about it, the goblins confessed their crime. The pelican was dismayed, but she was a char... char she was a charitable-hearted bird, and she could tell the crafty goblins were growing little creatures. Goblins, said the pious pelican, I will share my food with you, but you must, in return, follow my example and be as generous with others as I am with you. Take that to heart, and I will have considered your debt paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. You have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and your loving hearts, said the pelican. The crafty goblins realised how much they had to give, and for the rest of the day they looked for ways to help the other creatures of the forest. They found the stalwart moose struggling with an itchy, hard-to-reach spot on his back, and so they climbed up and gave it a good scratching. Next, they helped the old bear who could not get the honey out of a narrow beehive. 
They climbed up to the top of a tree with the hive and then dropped it, cracking it open. Finally, they found the princess, crying over a loss she would not speak about. So they wrapped their little arms around her in a great big hug and stayed until she felt better. So much worse now we know what it is. When they were done, they returned to the pious pelican. Did it feel good being as generous as I am? asked the pelican. It did, said the goblins. I'm glad, said the pelican. We all have problems that we can't solve on our own, but if everyone goes about with generous, no, generosity in their hearts, then there's always someone on hand to help. But we all must commit to do so, or there may be no one there to help you when you need it. This made sense to the goblins, and they thanked the pious pelican for her food and the lesson. Of course, by the time they were, by this time they were hungry again, and that remained an ongoing problem until the day the stalwart moose taught them to fish. But that is another story, and that is how the pious pelican forgave the crafty goblins and how she taught them charity. That's nice. Let's go back to see what order they have. Um, the moose, the bear, and the princess. Okay. So... Scratch the, the moose. He gave the moose a good scratch on the back. He broke open the beehive for the bear. And the princess got a hug. They hugged the princess when she was crying. Nailed it. Uh -huh. Our lives Another would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. Oh dear, oh dear. The Pelican Crossing is a specialty gift boutique located near the O'Shea Glacier, catering to the Gastineau Channel tourists as well as the dealers crossing locals. We specialize in an assortment of high quality products from home accessories, handmade souvenirs to personalized apparel and locally made art. The Pelican Crossing will be the first store to act as a relay between the buzzing arts and craft scene and customers. In addition to a wide array of novelty handcrafted products, the consumer will enjoy friendly and knowledgeable customer service from Vecchi store owner, store co-owner Tessa Vecchi and up-and-coming artist Marianne Ronan. This business plan is prepared to obtain financing in the amount of $20,000 to purchase inventory and to help cover expenses in the first year of operations. In year one, the Pelican Crossing plans to break even, and in year two, we plan to generate a moderate profit. Work working on the executive summary part of our business plan. What do you think, Tessa? Oh, that would have been great. That's such a good idea. Especially as Marianne makes these amazing things. But, yeah, that, that didn't work out. I think we have everything now. Yeah. Sad I'm missing some of the collectibles, but maybe we still find a, a couple. You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? Uh, uh, now I'm not sure. <laughs> I guess we can stay a little longer if you think there's more to find. Oh, we got that. We got that. We got that. We got that. Got that. Got that. We don't of all the things. Must be, that must be what they. I wish you just explained all this to us. I think we read this. Yeah. And the baby. That must be the baby blanket. Okay, I think we are done. You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? I think so. <laughs> Either way, I'm ready for this to be over. Me too. Oh, back to dramatic music. Here we go. Nice sunset. Uh-oh. We're good. <laughs> what are we waiting for? I want to know who is here that night. I'm coming, I'm coming. Let's try and remember who Marianne was arguing with. This might not be an answer we want to know, but... Oh, dramatic music. Here we go. Oh 
میافت And so Tom came and tried to set the barn on fire. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I've already been recording for two hours, but this is too exciting. I'm just going to keep going until the chapter ends. <laughs> Oh, he is coming. Let me take the lead on this. I know him better. I thought I did, anyway. Sure. No. Whatever. As long as we get answers. Oh, dramatic music. Listen. You're our father. Not a good start. <laughs> yes. You knew how bad it got out here. How little we had. Why didn't you help Marianne? You mean all the money she wanted? We didn't have anything to spare. Well, that winter was rough on everyone. And you would have starved out here if not for all the free food we gave you. Don't act like you had anything to do with that. That was all Tessa. That's a cool presumption, young man. <gasps> Maybe it was Tessa's idea initially. But I supported it. And your mother was happy to live off our handouts. <sighs> Don't like him. You tried to burn down our barn. <laughs> you tried to burn down our barn and knocked Tyler unconscious. I never meant to hurt anybody. But you, you did. weren't supposed to be home. Doesn't excuse the fact that you didn't even stop to help. What do you want me to say? I panicked. You suck. I was terrified that this whole thing was going to blow up in my face. I had to do something. You let Marianne drown, but then he also knows that it was her that... Oh, and then we, we confessed earlier. I'm... Okay, theory. If we didn't confess to Eddie, he, then Tom can use... Having seen Alison being the one to stab Marianne as blackmail. But we already confessed, so that won't matter now. But we can talk to Tyler, so let's do that. So what do we do now? We tell him he's got to fix the mess he made, one way or another. But how? How would you make something like this right? I have, I have no idea. You failed us, Tom. You need to make it right. I'll do whatever you want. As long as none of this gets out. Excuse me? <laughs> you want me to pay for my mistakes? Fine. But please, Tessa can't know. This would kill her. Tessa already knows, Tom. No. That's... That's impossible. It never occurred to you the reason Tessa cut Marianne off was you? Uh -huh. I, but she... She never said anything. 
you should try talking to your wife. Maybe if Good you point. had, <laughs> we wouldn't be in this situation. And maybe Marianne wouldn't be dead. Come on, you of all people should appreciate how troubled Marianne was. She was unhinged. Something like this would have happened sooner or later. Excuse me. Preyed on her or abandoned her. And you just couldn't risk being there when it happened. Even though it meant leaving her to raise kids out here all by herself. None of this would have happened if you'd manned the fuck up. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> yes, you did. I know it shouldn't have happened. But, well, your mother was a very pretty woman. And, and I had no self-control. So many places and done so many things. The way I always thought I would have. I got caught up. Love made me a fool. Look, I made mistakes. But this will not go any further than the three of us. Why? We know. Tessa knows. Marianne's dead. There's no point in hiding it anymore. He's afraid it'll tank his campaign. Oh, yeah. Am that's I wrong? That's a good one. Jesus, Tom. I've kept your secret all these years. I don't want to go spilling it, but I will if I have to. What? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Your little story about self-defense. I've never told anyone how Mary had really died. He's a dick. That night, I came out here because I was worried about your mother. And then he runs away instead of helping, which he's a dick. But is this entirely his memory? Is this a story he is going to tell? Like, oh, she wasn't threatening him at all. No, no way. You're a fucking liar. I saw what I saw. <gasps> You're manipulating us just like you manipulated her. Tyler, uh -huh. you're not listening to this, are you? Be smart about this, Allison. Are you sure you want this to get out? Sorry, I already told Andy. You've got way more here to lose than he does. 
His name will be all but clear, but you... You'll be a killer. What will your uncle say? Fuck you. Hey, Michael? Hmm? Well, the whole town might turn on you. Don't touch her. <laughs> No, I'm right. Just get out of here, Tom. Tyler and I need to talk alone. Just please think twice before making any rash decisions. There are a whole lot of lives at stake here. Leave us the fuck alone and never come back. <laughs> dear, dear, dear. Allie, you okay? You didn't let that asshole get to you, did you? Did you? What if he's right? I've been having all these nightmares about that night. And they were a lot like how Tom said. And now, when I try to remember, that's all I can see. He's trying to mess with your head, and you're letting it work. No, it's more than that. Ever since we started digging, I... I haven't been able to shake this feeling like something's off. Something's off because he put this in your head. Don't let him get away with it. He might not be lying. We, we keep getting things mixed up. We remember Ooh. totally different versions of the past. Those are just details. This isn't that. She was going to kill me. I'm not so sure anymore, Tyler. I'm pretty sure she never wanted to kill Tyler. I'm not so sure she wasn't... ...threatening someone. Ah, that would be awful. She had a gun pointed at me. She chased me. She said she was going to kill me. Oh no, don't let me, don't make me choose. Don't make me choose. She threatened Tom with those exact same words, with the same gun on the same pier. The thing you said to Eddie the other day got thrown back at me. Don't you think it's possible that happened here too? Yes. I don't want it. Yes, it's possible. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> I, I don't know. And we're never gonna know the truth, are we? Because the second you walk away from something... That's it. Yeah. I guess at this point... You just 
You have to decide what you believe. Me? Yeah. Oh. You need to start dealing, Allie. And that means coming to terms with whatever version of the past feels the most true to you. No more running. Whatever you choose, you gotta live with it, okay? No, oh no, oh no, I don't I don't want to have to be I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm going to kill you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Shit. Okay. I can believe. Tom's version that she is not gonna kill Tyler, not gonna hurt Tyler, because Allison got very up. They showed us that Allison got very upset after having seen Marianne threaten Tom. That affected her a lot. So it might very well be that Allison acted out of remembering that. But again, still, the, the person I really blame for Marianne's death at this point is Tom, because if he'd gone and tried and hauled her out of the water, chances are she might have been okay. Because it was the drowning that did it, not the stabbing. But even then... What what's what would be better for Allison? Cause they both remember having a, you know, oh. I don't know. I'm Six going year. to kill you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Believing the best of Marianne. I'm going to kill you. I'm going this to kill you. Never quite made sense. I'm not gonna hurt you. And their mom loved them. Okay, let's go with this. Oh god. Is this a mistake? meant for us it was her way of of explaining what she was going through i made a horrible mistake <laughs> hey hey it's okay i'm here Hey, peep what I just found downstairs. <laughs> Alcohol fixes think? the problem. <laughs> well, Please well, don't end up like Sam. It's not bad.
Where are you at right now? Shock. I just keep hearing her say she wasn't going to hurt you. Over and over. We were kids. We freaked out. You weren't equipped to deal with that shit. She was just talking to you. And I... I killed her. Stop. I don't want to use our voice again. Ever. What? Seriously? I don't know. No. But I want to stop feeling like this. And I think we'll be better off without it. This morning, I kept getting these horrible visions. Of you and Marianne and Eddie. Visions? Like our memories? Yeah, but, but different. It was all my worst thoughts brought to life. You were in my bedroom saying I abandoned you. Eddie called me a snake. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. It's okay. I was the one That's who walked not out. not the I point. Just, I can't let that happen again. I, I don't think it will. Something's been pushing us to find answers. And now we have them. Maybe I'm wrong. And if it stays bad, we can stop. Mm. But I really want to keep what makes us us. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him because, even reduced to just one hand. He was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted what do you the day think? he would emerge. Brothers and sisters. To once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. Always. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the mad hunter. Oh. Six months later. What has he done to his hair? <laughs> One last look. I'm good to go. Oh, this is us again. I'm oh, hoping this hey, is the epilogue. It's me. Hey, me. 
House is empty. I'm getting ready to head out. So, last chance. Is there anything you want me to do while I'm in town? Listen, Ty, you're dropping off the keys with Tina, right? Yep, gonna leave them at her office on my way to the ferry. Well, that's it then. That's Juno. How's Juno? Big and full of people, even without tourists. Michael's been writing up rules for the apartment. I need your support against his whole food policy. <laughs> Just refuse to sign anything until I get there, okay? Okay, but you better hurry. If he gets his way, we'll only have one small shelf for junk food. What? Heresy. I'm gonna need like twice that just for snack cakes after my surgery next month. I know, right? Ooh. This cannot stand. Top surgery. Snacks essential. How are you? Good, actually. Really good. You? Same. You know, emptying the house really cleared my head out. Thanks for doing that. The observatory really needed me this week. And after everything that happened, I, I just felt like I needed to keep some miles between me and Delos Crossing. No worries. You still loving your therapist? Gail, Ooh. yes. I was actually just doing some letter writing she assigned me as homework. It really helped me get some perspective. That sounds awesome. Uh, did you see the article I sent you about Tom losing the election? Ah, oh, yes. I saw your message right before derby practice, so I didn't have time to read it. But I did cackle at the headline. <laughs> did you picture Tom's face whenever you went in for a block? <laughs> No, but that is a great idea. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad Tessa finally left his ass. Karma is a bitch. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna hang up now. See you tonight. Okay, I'm gonna take one last walk through the house and then head to the ferry. Drive safe. Uh, pretty sure that's the only way possible in the old Allison mobile. Love you, Tyler. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> The old Atlas and Reveal. Yep, that's about right. Oh, okay. This is the epilogue. And it seems that they're doing well. alison has got Too therapy. Too Tessa closed your cafe. That other place oh. just doesn't quite hit the spot. Tessa's gone off somewhere else. I take it. I should have probably run these by his place. Or just drop them off at Bernie's. Hmm... Well, nope. mostly empty now. Huh. But I swear. Well, at least he finally dumped his ass. <laughs> if I could cry, that last bit would have made me cry, honestly. Dearest Tyler and Allison, I'm writing this letter from Juno International Airport, where I will soon board a plane to Manila on a missionary assignment. I apologize for not coming in person to say goodbye, but I was called to make this decision alone and to carry it out on my own as well. I'm sure you understand that sometimes we must follow without question the prompting of the spirit. <laughs> I will not be coming back to Dios Crossing for some time. Before I go, there's still something I feel I must confess to you both. Perhaps because I've never found the strength to confront my husband, I've never been able to forgive Marianne for her betrayal. I truly did love you both like my own children. I always tried to forgive your mother for her unapologetic lifestyle. But when I discovered that you were the fruit of her affair with my Thomas, yeah, that's n not great, I wanted her to suffer like I was suffering, and I brought down on your house the wrath I never dared allow to unfold in mine. Hmm. I've been deeply ashamed all these years, and I'm surprised how much better I feel with it out in the open. The greatest thing about truth is the peace it brings to your life. I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. You've taught me once again how love will bring you further in life. Something that Marianne had been trying to show me all along. Take care of each other, always, in his steps, Tessa. Well, I'm, I'm glad she's gone off to do something... Good, or well, it very much depends on what exactly she's doing, but let's not say more about that. <laughs> Empty, once again. Nope. Blim, blim. <laughs> <laughs> Shocked face.
leaving these behind? No, we're taking the photos and the pictures. Because you've got to hold on to the good memories. Nope. Hey, goblins. Word in town is you guys finally sold the house. I came by tonight to help you fix what needs to be fixed, but there was nobody home. Are you gone already? Things change so fast these days. Anyway, you know where to find me if you want me to fix things. If you're still in town, I mean. It's getting late and I'm pretty tired. Oh, and I'm sorry for acting like the stupid ass I am. Everywhere I look, I think about what used to be. I've been trying to do better, but I think I might be too late for an old bear like me. Not sure if this will reach you. It's getting late. Call me if you're still around. Be safe, Sam. P.S. Wish it was as easy to fix everything as a boat. <laughs> this is a massive Man, house. Seeing it empty is so weird. But at least it's the last time we'll ever have to. Yeah. Oh, it's one of those hologram things. That's neat. Don't forget a laptop. Oh my god. Michael, must be... <laughs> Chattington app. <laughs> Michael, must be a relief to finally be done with that place. No doubt. Traffic's not too bad. I should be back at your place around 4pm. Ah, traffic and DLOS. Only if the mailbox bandit escaped. Hey, I'm making that biscuit thing you like. Damn, on my way. I'll probably take out some fire hydrants and stop signs. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> It'll keep warm. See you in a few. <laughs> take. Yoink. Got that. Let's have one last look at this fantastic view. I miss his hair. <sighs> Spring. I'm gonna miss this. Yes. One more jog down memory lane, Mr. Ronan? Hey, I'm having a private moment with me, myself, and I here. <laughs> okay, carry on. <laughs> Yeah, it is beautiful. But I suppose it's time to leave. Anything else? Don't think so. But that means we really did miss um, those last couple of uh, figurines. That's a shame. Wow, that leads a lot of work, that house. But it's so nice. It's so nice. Yep. Dino's crossing most wanted escapes. <laughs> Fuzzy Bandit puts mail at peril once again. <laughs> a huge big kitchen. Let's go upstairs one last time. Double check because he's leaving stuff all over the place. Goodbye, broom. Goodbye, room. Goodbye, man on the moon. <laughs> For posterity. I still do like that wallpaper. But yeah, is that mold horror? <laughs> well, that was it, I suppose. Bleep bleep. <laughs> Goblin pictures. Oh, check the bathroom. Yeah, I think we're good. Oh, stuff. Juno University, join us. Apply now.
newspaper? Sucks to suck. Thomas Anthony Fecky. <laughs> Venny Vady Lusty. <laughs> Thomas Vecky loses mayoral election against current Mayor Leslie Sko. Mayor Leslie Sko declared victory in a bid for re-election over controversial challenger Thomas Vecky. With almost 68% of the vote, Sko's triumph was the widest margin of victory in Delos Crossing history. Her rival, local business owner Vecchi, sparked much debate in the community over his gun control policies, but Sko's success has been mainly attributed to her willingness to reach across party lines. Many in the community say a re-election came as no surprise. According to sources close to the city council, Sko invited Vecchi to join her mayoral cabinet, but Vecchi refused. Vecchi declined to comment on the election results, except to say he plans to focus on his family and other business pursuits. Some in the community were baffled by his comments given the recent shuttering of Vecchi's business, the highly popular Tessa's Cafe, managed by his wife, Tessa Vecchi. In a separate statement, Mrs. Vecchi announced she was ending her thriving business to focus on per personal and spiritual matters. <laughs> so, you know, news hasn't spread, but... Oh, I think we already checked this. But that's about it. Okay, close -y the door. Leave the house for good. Well, this is goodbye for real, I guess. Hey, Aaron. It's Ty. Tyler Ronan. I, uh, uh, thought I'd catch you on your break between sessions, but I guess you're going long with another rebel with too many causes. <laughs> I know I haven't reached out since I left Fireweed, but I just wanted to say, well, you were right about grief, about it going in circles. This morning, I was out on the porch staring at the fog, and my mother, she, she just tumbled right out of me. But it was okay. It actually felt good to remember. Anyway, uh, give me a call back if you get a chance. I'll see you around. And thank you. Achievement unlocks, lock up a go, and twins for life. Oh. Well, I wanted a good story, and that definitely was a good story with all the feelings. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Oh. Also, didn't really going into it didn't know it was a story about grief which you know, is personally very le relevant for me at the moment so that's extra oh, impact let's let's call it that but yeah it, it was very good I liked it a lot not one I'm gonna replay very soon I don't think but let's see what we did Aha. Alison was grateful they completed Marianne's puzzle 84% completed the puzzle because I was super interested. Alison was influenced by t Tom's testimony. 0% believed in Tom's testimony. 100% believed in the twin's memory. Oh my gosh, I went completely against everyone with that.
Because I... Well, I sort of explained my, my reasoning at the time, but it felt so bad to go with... I mean, the, the bad memory of their mother at the end, when their mother really loved them. And I never, you know, I was convinced that their mother did not think that she was threatening them. She wouldn't have. I, I don't believe that for a minute. If she, if she did what she did, it must have been because she was seeing someone else there instead of Tyler. Completely convinced of that. So for me, it kind of did fit that, you know, they, it was a shitty night. They were kids. Horrible things were happening. So I, I see how that could be the truth and better for them in the long run than going, nah, she was threatening Tyler. She wanted to kill Tyler. I, I, I don't believe that. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> Twins trusted their bond and kept their voice. 95% did that. Eddie was relieved that Allison accepted responsibility in the murder. 67% confessed. Okay. Sam felt understood by Allison. Ah, 70% listened to Sam's story. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. 30% confronted Sam with his addiction. Yeah. I do believe most people just want to be listened to. Michael felt closer to Tyler. 71% kissed Michael. Yes. <laughs> If you or anyone you know are struggling with suicidal thoughts or experiencing emotional crisis, you can help find help using these resources. You matter and we need you in the world. Yes. Very true. I mean, things might suck. But if you quit now, you never know if it's going to get better later. Can't get worse, can it? <laughs> But that was that. Yeah, I really liked it. I, well, I want to say I recommend you play it, but I don't think the story will change very much. So you should if you want to. Of course, you should. But maybe wait a while until you can kind of discover it or rediscover it for yourself a bit. That I think it's better going into this kind of game blind. You know, without knowledge of what's going to happen or, or the story. But, yeah. Oh, that was it. Long one, but worth it. <laughs> Thank you for watching, especially if you stuck with this all the way through to the end. Good on you. <laughs> it's a long watch. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed it. And to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> one more jog down memory lane, Mr. Ronan. Hey, I'm having a private moment with me, myself, and I here. Okay, carry on.